Hello everyone, today's video is about a red dot, a CC75 and a dovetail mount story. Originally I was tempted to get a red dot but the best of the best which is by now standard and RMR with a milling of the top of the slide and that I would have been ready to rock and roll except that would have set me back between six and seven hundred bucks I don't think I was ready to do that knowing that I might not like a red dot so I took the cheapest way which is still expensive Vortex Venom very very nice little red dot mounted on my C75 using a Springer Precision Mount. Here is the mount. Comes with some uh, blue Loctite, some screws, we'll go over that. In the package was some uh, grease and oil. Nice little advertising for uh, Lucas Oil. And uh, I'm not going to go too much into details on the Vortex. It is a 6M way perfect for competition. If you want a longer distance, you might want to look at 3M away. But this little thing is light, is one ounce, very, very light. Uh, it comes with everything in the box to mount directly onto your Picatinny rail, so for rifle. And many people have placed their Venom on their handgun with high success. I love this one because the battery can be swept on top adjustment on the side and the front here so let's put it on and hit the range and see what is the learning curve some people say it's pretty light some others say it's a very heavy learning curve I think personally is how much training you have with your gun if you have been training to acquire your sight quickly by thousands of repetitions, your body knows exactly how to align your gun and that will apply to the red dot. If on the other hand you have not been training doing this well, your training will start as soon as you put your red dot. So the learning curve will happen with the red dot instead of progressively iron sight then red dot. Okay, let's put it on. First I need to remove my old sight. And I'm going to remove the side from right to left. Very, very smooth. Done. I did also put some Loctite on the bottom here. I like my Loctite. All right. Done with this one. Okay, and the Loctite is a bit nasty here. I'm going to brush it off. Okay, and now the slide is ready to accept the Springer Precision dovetail mount for the red dot. This one is specially made for the Vortex Venom. And even so, we can see some tool marks. It doesn't matter, it's just a, a support plate. But it's really nice, very light. And what I like is, they also drill two holes and place some screws to support the entire platform. But it's not just some screws I'm going to show you. They are 
padded plastic rubber at the end, on the tip. That means it will not damage your slide when you take them up. So one in the front, one in the back for full support. And the mount comes with two screws that fit the Vortex Venom perfectly. And let's see how it goes in it. Oh, that will need to be filed down. So next step is to smooth out the bottom here to mount it. And I'm also going to remove the two other screws and they are tiny, so not to lose. Those are very important and probably not that easy to find. And I'm going to start with some 320 sandpaper and work my way down. I had some leftover sandpaper. So, when sanding sides, you don't want to go into a regular motion or the bottom might end up into an angle. You want to vary your, your uh, sanding. So circular one way, circular the other, right, left, front, back, change constantly your movement. And I sanded it quite a bit. It took me 10, 15 minutes with uh, some uh, 3M 320 sandpaper and then it's going in with a little bit of resistance but not too much and you want to center it the more center it is the less work you will have to do on the adjustment of the red dot and that's pretty centered yes so now I'm going to put some Loctite and put back those, those screws there One last look before I tied up everything. Okay, I think I'm good. <clears throat> and you don't have to tie up too much. You don't want to strip any any screws. The Loctite is going to make sure everything is very tight. So hand tight, snug, there we go. And that's not going anywhere. Well, we'll find out with the, the shooting. Let's put the two other screws to secure the mount, which I'm surprised because that shouldn't move too much, but it's good to have. I'm just testing right now to see how it touched the, the frame. And then I will pull it out and place some Loctite. So if I force it too much, the front will go up, so I just want it snug. Interesting. Okay, so not too tight on this one. Other one, same thing. And just snug. And so the sight will mount on those plug here. And those plugs are pretty awesome because you can remove the sight, work on it, put it back, and it allows to align the sight perfectly or the red dot perfectly and to find is zero. One thing I was worried about that plate is 
how would it affect the access to that uh, ejector pin? Well, it's still available. So I don't have to remove the sight to remove that pin. That is pretty cool. I was thinking about it. I couldn't see any pictures showing anything, but now my punch can still access that, uh, that pin. Beautiful. And then the sight, put it on. You have two screws, lock tight again. Just snug until you put the other one in and then you will tie it up. Never tie it up the first one because when you do that, it might go perfectly in, but the other hole might not be aligned correctly. And you have no way to move the item you are trying to screw in. As if you leave everything loose, you can put all the other screws in before you tie it up. Okay, I'm in. I don't need a torque wrench. Snug and the Loctite will do the rest. I will, during my first session, check out the tightness of those screws if they become loose, but they shouldn't. Loctite, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, addition to screws. Okay, and that's how it looks like. Some ideas. I wonder how necessary those uh, screws are. It looks... I didn't tie it up very much, but it looks like it's uh, the plate is going up a little bit. You can also, also see some space on the, underneath here, the dovetail. We'll find out on the field. Let's put everything back. As the slide of the seat is very thin, I do grab as well the vortex that I don't know how it's going to affect the uh, the controls here. I know to turn it on you just push once. To turn it off you have to hold the down button for five seconds. So if I even push the down button for a second, it's not going to do anything to the side. So I will still be on and I am on. I'm going to play with it, train with it, and then I will go to the range, and uh, we'll see each other at the range. Whoa, okay. It's a way low. Okay, well, I'm back from the range and I encountered an issue with that uh, Springer Precision plate. It's a good plate, but there is one thing you have to know and they don't tell you, which is bad, 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 is when you insert those two screws here, if you push this one down, if you screw it down, it will leave the front. If you loosen it up and screw this one down, it will leave the back, affecting of course the red dot. I find out because I just snug those two screws there to try to make the platform level and of course it wasn't because I'm not, I mean my eye is not that good. So when I went to the range and tried to adjust the height, I maxed it out and couldn't understand why. Luckily I brought my wrench, I adjusted the screws and still it's a bit on the excess of the adjustment but um, I was able to center the, the site. Now we'll have to do it again uh, because I want to do it the right way. The right way is you want your gun 
here is not uh, a perfect side to side, but you want it level front to back. And it is. If I put the bubble here, it's almost there. So I need to bring the bubble right in the center. It could be a bit to the left or to the right. That means my gun is not level right to right, right to left, which is okay. But I want to bring it into the center. So to do that, I need to raise the front. And I probably need to loosen up the back. Oh, I feel there is some Loctite. Okay, let's loosen up. And I'm going to tie up the front. And it's raising it. Okay, I'm going to loosen up the back again. Let's see. And I'm going to tie it up a bit more. And we can see we got getting centered there. Perfect. Looking at the plate from the side of the gun, you cannot tell it's level because it's tapered down. I measured the dimension of the, the plate here and there, and it's thicker here than it is there, so it doesn't help. Now at that point, I'm going to put some more blue Loctite. I'm going to have to loosen up everything, but I want this to be done for good once and for all. Then I will have to go back to the range and readjust the sight. That's good. And it is centered on the bubble, so I will make it snug. It's starting to go forward. Okay, I'm good. It looks okay sideways. I'm going to make sure my gun is centered and it's not centered right to left. Here, yeah, we can do that easily, but it's centered. Perfect. Okay, now I can reinstall my vortex with more Loctite, of course, and then that should be good for the range. I shouldn't have too much adjustment to make. Okay. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. The dimensions here. The plate is thicker here than it is there. So when you have it on the gun, you cannot tell really if it's leveled. The only way to do it is with a lever. Okay then. Now I will have to go back to the range. Definitely uh, easier if you have been practicing with your iron sight for a long time. I never had really any issues at the range to uh, bring the red dot. I did not hunt for it very much. A little bit, but not much. All right, I will have to go back to the range. Okay. Beautiful. Love the thing. So until next time, see you guys.